All right. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and our apostles to Great Millstone that taught us this truth. And salutations to the hopeful elect that's around the four corners of the globe. And the elect begins with 144,000. Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jehovah. Bahashem is in the name. Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. The Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit. I'm the brother I will with the GMS Chicago branch out here in Chicago. Come back at you with another lesson. And Lord willing, I hope this uh, lesson be edifying to whoever may reach. Um, I really didn't have nothing planned through the spirit, but I'm going to see what the spirit guides me. You know, I'm going to start off, uh, uh, start off at Habakkuk, uh, you know, two and one, you know, which, you know, um, and I want to start right here. You know how I elder, beloved elder apostle to hard coin this year, you know, the year that Lord willing, all the prophecies come to pass. So, um, It'd be, you know, just right to start right here. And I see where the spirit takes me. So I'm going to start at the top. This is the book of Habakkuk 2 and 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Right. We're standing upon our watch because what? We're watchmen, you know, to the nation of Israel. Us men of the Lord of the hope for righteous elect. You know, we're watchmen. You know, we're watching out for the prophecies. You know, we're, uh, you know, reading different articles, you know. Watching the news, you know, looking up, uh, looking up different news articles, you know, to see, you know, the different prophecies that's coming to pass. You know, that's us standing upon our watch. We're looking out, you know. Uh, verse two, it says, and the Lord, Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Right. Make it plain upon tables. Talking about what? The prophecies, you know, talking about the prophecies. It says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You know, what's the prophecies that we bring out? The upcoming, you know, of the uh, coming to pass of the MOTB, which is um, the uh, uh, the micro uh, C-hip, you know, just to avoid take, uh, getting this lesson taken down. You know, we have to talk into code, but the coming to pass of the RFID C-hip, you know, which is the MOTB, you know, as you can read in Revelation 13 and 16, you know, that no man might buy or sell. Say if he had had the uh, the karagma, you know, you know World War Three, the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, all these things that we can see, you know, bright as day, that these things are you know fastly approaching, you know, the MOTB is at the door, and we know when that MOTB come to pass, you know, when this things get when this thing gets mandated across the four corners of the uh, of the world, we know that we are. <laughs> That we're at the the really you know the the really you know end end of this place, you know we're already at the end of Esau's kingdom right now. But when that MOTB come to pass, this man is literally running on fumes at that point, you know, because the scripture does say what they, the Lord has set him bounds that he cannot pass. But let's continue, verse three. It says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie." Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, right? These prophecies are not going to be prolonged any longer, you know? Because there's a scripture that says, what? You know, um, you know, uh, the Lord has shown the days, you know, because of what? No flesh shall be saved. So the Lord is speeding things along, you know? It says for the vision, uh, the vision is yet for an appointed time, right? The Lord, you know, set up uh, prophecies. The Lord, you know, basically... You know, um, put the time in the place where these prophecies will come to pass, you know, and we're in that time where, like I said before, the MOTB is coming to pass, which is the RFID C hip, you know, that no man might buy or sell, you know, we're seeing the um, World War Three, you know, escalating. But let's get this. This is. um, I should get that second address. You know what? Let's get that second address now. This is the book of second address nine and one. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, right? We're measuring the time diligently by the way of the what? The prophecies, you know? Like I said, we're, re we're reading different news articles. We're watching the news. You know, we're standing upon our watch. You know, we're measuring, you know, the times by the way of the prophecies. When thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. It says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right. And we're seeing that right now because what we're seeing, you know, di different calamities happening around the world. You know, we did. We seeing different things happening. You know, we seeing mass judgment take place across the planet Earth. We know that the coming of Yahweh, by, uh, Yahweh Shai is near. You know, Yahweh is going to send his son Yahweh Shai back, you know, to, you know, to deliver his elect. But also what? Cash judgment. 
upon the wicked. You know, it says verse three, it says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? It was just an earthquake that happened in Morocco. You know, they're constantly finding bodies, you know, out the, you know, one of the most devastating earthquakes, you know, in a very long time. You know, we've seen that earthquake over there in um, Morocco and uproars of the people in the world because for every country that you look in, it's a, a major protest, you know, of, of the people against their government, you know, whether it be for taxes, famines, you know, uh, you know, different things of that nature, just to name a few things, you know, it's uproars of the people. A lot of these people was having problems with their governments and different things like that. A lot of these people was uprising, you know, and it says, um, Verse four says, "Then shalt thou well understand that the uh, that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, right? Because all this was, you know, spoken about since the beginning. You know, the Lord had all this planned out since the beginning. It says, um, verse five. It says, for like as all that is made in the world has has hath a beginning." And an end, and the end is manifest, right? The end is made manifest because what well, we know that we're at the end of uh, Esau's uh, Esau Edom's kingdom. That's being made manifest because of the different prophecies that's coming to pass and different things of that nature. So we know that you know the end is manifest because what well, we're seeing the, the downfall of our enemy, which is you know starting with Esau Edom. And to back that up, let's get this Second Ezra six and nine. This is the book of Second Ezra. Uh, Six, and I'm going to start at seven. Then answer I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? It says, um, verse eight, it says, and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, right? Going back to the account of Genesis, the 25th chapter, when Jacob and uh, Esau was born, you know? Jacob, uh, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, which is symbolic of, you know, Jacob taking Esau down. Who's ultimately going to take Esau down? Yahweh Shai, you know, upon um, when our Lord makes a second return, you know, he's going to, you know, physically take, violently take Esau out of power. It says, verse nine, it says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right. Esau is the end of the world. Because, you know, a lot of these Christians say, you know, <laughs> A lot of Christians, just to say this real quick, a lot of Christians think, you know, when the end happens, the world is going to blow up and everybody, you know, they they believe in the whole rapture and things of that nature. They believe the world is going to blow up and all that type of nonsense. But it's talking about the end of an age. We're at the end of Esau's Edom, uh, Edom's age, you know, we're at the end of his world, you know, because what ultimately we're finna. The Lord is going to set up, you know, uh, the Israelites, you know, starting with the elect. And we're going to rule this world in righteousness. You know, as the scriptures say, a new heavens and a new earth. Let me read this again. It's the book of 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. It's for, it says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right. We're seeing the end of Esau's Edom's world right now. What I read in that 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, how it talks about the end is made manifest. We see this man physically falling. The different prophecies coming to pass, which ultimately is going to, you know, uh, conclude of uh, conclude in Esau's downfall, because we know that what <laughs> during World War Three we know that America is going to be completely destroyed by ICBM missiles. You know, and Yahweh you know, once Yahweh makes a second return, he's going to violently remove this man out of power. You know, let's go back to the second address nine. It says, uh. Verse uh, second address nine and five, it says, for like as all that is made in the world has a beginning and an end and the end is manifest. Right. We know that we're at the end. The different prophecies that's coming to pass. Ultimately, it was going to uh, conclude in Esau's Edom's downfall. It says, verse six it says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and any endings and effects and signs. It says, verse seven it says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith were by ye have believed because ultimately, you know, when we show faith, we have to show faith, you know, uh, but also have works also, you know, and that's how ultimately, you know, um, that Lord willing, we're going to make it up out of here, you know, given that diligence, you know, have that faith, but also have the works to coincide with it. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to get from here. Let's get this. Um, let's see. 
let's get this the book of Ezekiel This is the book of Ezekiel 33 and 33. It says, And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. Right. You know, I read, started off with the Habakkuk, uh, the second chapter. You know, um, I talked about these prophecies is, is no longer going to tarry. But ultimately, what we're, you know, starting with our elders and our apostles on down, we've been telling these people for a very long time, you know. And a lot of these people scoff. You know, we teach them. You know, we tell them about the... Uh, you know, the uh, the MOTB coming to pass, that no man might buy or sell, they scoff. We tell them about Jacob's trouble. You know, how a lot of, you know, a lot of, this is going to be a whole lot of death. A lot of these people still scoff, you know. Then they're going to know when all these things begin to happen, then those same people that were scoffing, they're going to know we were telling the truth, you know. They're going to know we were telling the truth, but it's going to be too late, you know, because this word is not going to be out here for too much longer. That's Amos 8. Let's get that. This is the book of Amos 8 and 11. It says, Behold, the day is come, said the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right, the famine of the word. You know? Because what? The internet is not going to be here forever. We're not going to be on the highways and byways forever. And then, you know, when all when, when when shit really begins to break down, when society completely collapse, those same scoffers is going to be looking, you know, looking for us. You know, I read that in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 33 and 33. Then shall they know it was a prophet among them, you know? Because right now, you see these people scoffing right now, you know, laughing, having a good time, talking shit, and things like that. But when things get real, those are going to be the same guys and women looking for us in that time, you know? It says, verse 12, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, it says, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and shall not find it. Yeah, because ultimately, the Lord is going to remove his prophets from the highways and byways. The internet is going to be non-existent. And what? These people are just going to be left out here. For whatever the Lord has, you know, whatever Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai has in store for these people, you know, they're going to be left out here for the slaughter. You know, mainly, uh, uh, really two-thirds of our people, you know, that rejected Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You know, they're going to be left out here and they're going to be given over to the slaughter. You know, the four sword judgments, which you can read about in Jeremiah 15. Let's get that. I'm going to close out with that probably, Lord willing. If the Lord, you know, don't put on nothing on my spirit to bring nothing else out. But this is the book of Jeremiah 15 and one. It says, then said the Lord, yeah, how about Shimei, I will shine to me. Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my Mine could not be toward his uh slot yet. My mind could not be toward this people, cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. It says, verse two, and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus said the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, such as are for uh for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity of uh to the captivity. Right. These are the different things, you know, you know, that our people suffer back then is going to suffer uh, now when Jacob's trouble, you know, really, you know, gets to that point. You know, it says verse three, it says, and I will appoint over them four kinds, said the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, the sword to slay and the dogs to tear and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. Right. These are the four sword judgments of the Lord. And what does the scripture say? There's going to be a time like never before, and we can get that. You know, the Lord is going to amp up these judgments to a, a, a level we haven't seen before. Let's get that Daniels 12 and 1. This is the book of Daniels 12 and 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Right, Michael. Michael is the, uh, the archangel, you know, one of the top angels of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Daniel 12 and 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time, Salaki, even to that same time, and at thy time, uh, and at that Salaki, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. 
who's on the, who's going to be the only ones found written in the book the elect you know what you can read about in um i believe it's revelations the seventh chapter if i'm uh, if i'm not mistaken you know twelve thousand men out of each tribe let's i want to take a look real quick just to make sure i'm correct con going into revelation seven you know the elect you know how the lord is going to you know, um, seal 12,000 uh, men out of each tribe, you know? Ultimately, those are the ones found written in the book, the elect, you know, starting with 144,000, you know? But it's going to be a time like never before, as Daniel 12 and 1 say. You know, I read that Jeremiah 15, the Lord, you know, has his four sword judgments, but the Lord is going to amp it up to a degree that we never have never seen before. Let's actually get that. Talking about that time, that time is talking about Jacob's trouble. Let's get that. Jeremiah 30 and 7. This is the book of Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, And the last for that day is great. And the it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Right? The he that's going to be saved out of it is, is talking about the elect. You know, the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, as I mentioned before, going back to that Revelation 7, 12,000 men out of each tribe. You know, you got the innumerable multitude. You know, which the Lord is going to have mercy on, which is the one third, you know, but this Jeremiah 30 and 7 and that Daniel 12 and 1 are perfect precepts to go together. You know, talking about Jacob's trouble. How is this going to be a time like never before? You know, well, Esau is going to come down having that great wrath. Man, the Lord, <laughs> con, spirit is hot right now. This is the book of Revelations 12 and 12. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil, devil means deceiver. It says, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Right, so what's end up is going to happen, you know, Esau Edom is going to lose his shit. You know, he's going to really show his horns and he's <laughs> he's going to, you know, throw everything that he has. Everything that you have by Shem Yahushua has given him from his technology. You can read about that in Revelation 6, that great sword. You know, his technology, he's going to you know, he's going to come down heavy upon uh, upon Israel. You know, but who's going to be saved out of it? The elect. Because two-thirds is going to be caught up out here. You know, the Lord is going to, <laughs> the Lord is going to deliver Israel to, uh, two-thirds of Israel to the slaughter. You know, read about that, you know, the four sword judgments in Jeremiah 15. You know, Daniel 12 said it's going to be a time like never before. All hell is about to break loose soon. And two-thirds of our people is going to be caught up out here. You know, so through the spirit, that's all I really had. You know, Lord, woman, I hope this lesson was edifying. So I'm going to end up by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Makak, Wadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone that taught us the truth. And salutations to the hopeful elect that's around the four corners of the globe. Lord, woman, I hope this lesson was edifying. Until next time, Wah, Ababa, Shalom.